Venezolano como un todo. President Nicolas Maduro is pressing ahead with plans for a controversial election in Venezuela, despite claims it's a move to institutionalize dictatorship. With a week to go, he defended the poll for a new congressional body, which could effectively replace the opposition-led National Assembly. The imperial right wing believes it can give orders to Venezuela. The only ones who give orders here are the people, the leftist leader said, denouncing a threat from U.S. President Trump to impose sanctions on Venezuela if the vote takes place. Foreign imperial governments and foreigners don't give the orders here, Maduro declared on his weekly TV show. More than 100 people have died in months of anti-government unrest in Venezuela, which is in the midst of a crippling economic crisis. This was the capital Caracas on Saturday. More protests and a national strike are planned ahead of Sunday's vote, which Maduro's opponents are to boycott. One of the best-known faces of protests in Venezuela has tweeted a video from hospital with a bandaged face, but still defiantly playing his violin. Willy Artiega was injured on Saturday in violent clashes during a protest in Caracas against President Nicola Maduro. The 23-year-old is famous in Venezuela for playing the national anthem and other tunes on his violin in front of lines of security forces. Neither rubber bullets nor pellets or smashing up my violin, because we'll continue in the fight. Whatever happens, we'll continue in the struggle for Venezuela. Thank you. Ortega describes himself as a member of the resistance, a vast youth-led movement that, together with the opposition coalition, has spearheaded the anti-government protests. They launched protests in early April against Maduro, who they say is turning the country into a dictatorship and wrecking what should be a prosperous economy. Officials at the White House are giving different signals about whether Donald Trump will agree to legislation allowing new sanctions on Russia. White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci said Mr. Trump hadn't yet decided whether to sign the bill. The legislation is designed as a form of punishment for the alleged Russian involvement in his election. In tweets, Mr. Trump dismissed such talk as a witch hunt and condemned members of his own party who hadn't supported him. But Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the Trump administration press secretary, says the White House supports the legislation. We support where the legislation is now. We'll continue working with the House and Senate uh, to put those tough sanctions in place on Russia until the situation in Ukraine is fully resolved, and it certainly isn't right now. If Mr. Trump vetoes the bill, he could feel suspicion that he supports Russia too much. But if he signs it, he would be performing a U-turn on one of his own administration's policies. But congressional Democrats said on Saturday they had agreed with Republicans on a deal allowing new sanctions targeting Russia, Iran and North Korea in a bill that would limit any potential effort by Trump to try to lift sanctions against Moscow. Amid the ongoing investigations into claims Moscow meddled in the U.S. election, there's a changing of the guard at the Russian embassy in Washington. Officials have confirmed that Ambassador Sergei Kislyak, a key figure in the controversy swirling around the Trump administration, has ended his posting after nine years in the job and is returning to Moscow. He's expected to be replaced by this man, the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Anatoly Antonov. Nine people have died after being transported in the back of a truck in the U.S. state of Texas. Police in San Antonio originally discovered eight people dead in the back of the lorry and rescued 30 others. A ninth person later died in hospital. The driver of the vehicle, which was in a Walmart car park, has been arrested. There was no air conditioning or water in the truck, despite temperatures outside hitting 38 Celsius. Officials believe the incident is linked to people smuggling. Palestinian protesters have clashed with Israeli forces over the introduction of new security measures at a holy site in East Jerusalem. It follows a week of escalating tensions in the region with mass prayer protests and several violent incidents. Metal detectors were installed at the site, known as Haram al-Sharif to Muslims and the Temple Mount to Jews, over a week ago. The move came after Arab gunmen opened fire from the shrine, killing two Israeli policemen. 
In Bethlehem, dozens of Palestinians prayed behind models they'd made of the metal detectors. They later set the models on fire. After the protest, Palestinians hurled stones at the Israeli forces who responded by dispersing the protest. Israel's security cabinet has met to review the security measures, but says they're necessary to prevent more attacks. One Jordanian is reported to have been killed and two others wounded in a shooting incident at the Israeli embassy in Amman. A police statement said the man was shot. On Friday, thousands of people gathered in Amman protesting at the installation of metal detectors at a site in East Jerusalem that's sacred to both Muslims and Jews. Ahmad Dabas saw what happened. I was at the gym, the windows overlooked the embassy, and I heard shouting. I opened the window and I saw people shooting at each other. Then the police asked us to close the windows. We closed the windows and we went down, and the shooting was still going on. And we saw the truck, and we saw everything. Jordan is the custodian of the site in East Jerusalem, known as Haram al-Sharif to Muslims and the Temple Mount to Jews. Many of Jordan's 7 million citizens are of Palestinian origin after having fled during the fighting that accompanied the creation of Israel in 1948. At least five people have been wounded in Switzerland, two of them seriously by a man armed with a chainsaw. The attack took place in Schaffhausen near the German border. The small Swiss town was immediately sealed off following the incident as police continued their search for the suspect, who remains on the run. He's been described as bald, around six feet tall, with an unkempt appearance. Police have said they are not treating the incident as terror-related. Evidentemente non sto vai un break, io ora non sto back e deporta con nostro collega Carl Reiter.